right, everybody. This is uh, Kelly Catron and Justine Bateman. Wake up and get real after a seven-year hiatus. Long time. We should have made wine or something. Wine, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Trying to crack the bottle open. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So this yeah, is we my have a Kathy, this is my Kathy Lee and Hoda imitation. Nice. Well, as Kelly rightly uh, pointed out, we have a tropical theme going on here. Yeah. I, what's What's yours? Uh, this is a painting. Uh, looks like uh, reminds Cuba. me of the uh, Beverly Hills Hotel. Oh, it's very beautiful. Um, I have Vivian Westwood wallpaper behind me, and some sort of like <laughs> binary Chinese emperor empress. Is that like the uh, the? Uh, she Chinese uh, little drummer boy or something? I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. I mean, I could try to give you a close-up. Would you like to see a close-up or should we just leave it? We should leave it as a they. They. Yeah. So they are. They are people. the drummer person. Chinese, Xinhua's, emperor yeah. emperor -ess. So, Kelly, what's going on? I I am I don't know. It's busy, busy, busy. I was just gardening. What what are you up to? Come on, you're not serious. I was just gardening. I, I was just gardening. I, I just was too. planted What'd you plant? Twelve black bearded irises. I put in a black calla lily. Oh. It must be a black flower day. And some corn in in very close proximity to each other, so I'm sure that'll be a disaster. So Why is arugula seeds. Corn is going to grow like this. And I know. The and the arugula is going to be all mixed in with it, probably. But that's, oh, that's how I pretty. roll with the gardening. What about the little rodents and stuff? Because you did make that video where you were killing gophers with a I shovel. Did, yeah, remember? that's a classic. I, did, <laughs> I do have a raised bed enclosed area. Maybe on, <laughs> on not today, but maybe sometime I'll show... I'll show what that all looks like. When maybe I'll do it when. You, when am I frozen? Because you're frozen. Oh, I am. Look at me. Can you still hear me? I can hear you, but you're like. <laughs> okay, you're out. Back. I was just. Uh, Next time that happens, I'm just gonna say your name three times fast. Just it's like a jinx. Just seeing, just seeing, just seeing. Um. You know what it looks like? It looks like we get our hair done at the same place. Yeah, we probably do. Yeah. Is it that like Nowhere. I don't care, I don't I don't brush my hair look? It's yes. very French, I think. I don't know. I know when I was on top model people got really mad and they were like, Why doesn't she comb her hair? And it was like, There's a hair person making my hair look like this. <laughs> Wait, who got mad? Viewers got mad. No, people, yeah, that like especially people in the Philippines for some reason. They don't like me there. Interesting. Yeah, I get death threats from the Philippines. About your hair? Just any way that they wanted me to die. Like, I wake up in the morning and I hope you die. One time, they, this one person was like, I hope you and your daughter die. I thought, okay, now this is not nice. If you want me to die, I don't care. But, like, don't wish death on my child. Like, I've always it's such black magic. Oh, you're wearing green pants. Are you wearing green pants? They go really Are they velvet or corduroy? Corduroy. They look really good with your painting. You should keep a knee up because it kind of pulls the shoe. Oh, and knee socks? Well, kind Aren't of. Aren't you sexy? See? Oh, those are nice. Where'd you get? Why are you wearing? I'm wearing flip flops and you're wearing like New York shoes. This is what I'm wearing. Have you on that? <laughs> this is the deduction of all shoes a flip flop. That's it. That's it. You don't need anything else. You know, if you work in fashion for 30 years like I have, you can just show up anywhere with this. Kelly. Like Andre Agassi of fashion. What? Um, so, uh, speaking about people getting mad about hair and stuff, uh -huh. I was, um, I'm working on a, on a new book that I think I told you about, about women's faces. And I wanted to find out from, so I wanted to see if I could find some guys on Twitter they would speak with me honestly, privately, about um, how they feel about older women's faces. 
And I got a bunch of responses that were just like, we love women's faces. We think it's awesome. You know, let those lines and wrinkles hang. And I'm like, all right, thinking you guys are sweet, but it's not what I'm looking for. Liar. And, and I don't know if I buy it. They're liars. <laughs> the, only, the only reason they're into it is if they think they can fuck a woman in their 50s. Then they're into it for a minute. It's like a sport. There's like big game hunting and there's like, Younger girls, hot girls. And then there's this one that you do secretly while you're doing it and then brag about it afterward. And that's our age. So wait, 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 brag like, about it. Wait, brag about it in order to say, oh, I'm totally cool with afterward. 50 year old women. No, I would fuck. I'm like, in fact, I did the other day. Like the equivalent of I have a black friend. No, oh, no. Like I can't, I couldn't possibly be ageist or sexist because I just slept with a 50 year old woman like that. No, 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 that's not how they do it. No, no, it's like, you got to hit that bitch. You got to hit that bitch. Like, but you don't brag about it before. So like, let's say that there's a bar and somebody's there and like a 23 year old girl shows up who's five foot 10. Let's just make her from the Eastern Bloc, what the fuck, Russian, blonde hair, legs for days, totally bred to be a killer, walks in the door in like a tight red, I mean, if she's not so rich, maybe Hervé Leger, she's rich as a Dean Alaya dress, walks in slamming body con, you know, the guy will turn to his friends and he'll go, I'm going to hit that. I'm going to take that. I'm taking that. Off. <laughs> now, why don't you sleep with an older woman? Okay. It's, it's like a notch on the belt, but you don't talk about the notch till afterward. So what when, are you, what are you a, saying afterwards then? A 52 year old woman walks in the door and there's a group of 30 year old guys. None of them. You know, unless they're like some kind of weird, like mature porn person goes, oh, I'm going to hit that. They they might hit it because they want to have the experience of being with an older woman. So let's say a 24 or 28 year old guy will want to sleep with a 48 or a 52 year old chick so he can say he did. But he won't say it before. He'll only say it afterward. That's now, my fear. Now him saying, oh, I did it afterwards is is what is what for him, do you think? It's like an achievement of an experience that they couldn't have possibly had with anybody else. Like okay. I've been dating this guy and, um, you know, he told me when he went, he went to Harvard and he told me, you know, that when he was at Harvard and at Boston college that he slept with a lot of older women. I said, okay, well, what's, what does that mean? Like you're, you're 21. Is that 32? <laughs> She's 25. Like, <laughs> yeah. And he was like, no, like women in their fifties. And I was like, really? Like, how was it? He goes, it was amazing. They know what to do. You know, you can learn a lot. So you basically become like some kind of pussy teacher. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> and what happens if you fall in love with them? Then you're really fucked. Yeah. What are you going to do? You're not going to have babies. You're not going to have babies. You know what? My, <laughs> do you know what my nanny said if I got pregnant? What? I can't say it anyway. We'll get too many hate letters. <laughs> okay. I can't use the word because if you use the word, then you can't. All right. Well, let's just say <laughs> that it, it doesn't it doesn't work with the lifestyle of. She just said, "I don't want any." You know, I don't want to say it. I can't say it. Beep. All right. We'll move beep, on. Beep 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 beep. I'll I'll write it on a I'll I'll text it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna text okay. it. <laughs> Hold on, I want to um, make sure I send it to the right person. Well, I mean, I think, uh, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm always uh, really drawn to uh, older women's faces. Like, I'm... <laughs> All right, that'll be in the, uh, in the extras DVD version of this. <laughs> But I, uh, you know, I'm really, I'm, I find women's older faces like really compelling. If, if like a woman's who? talking to me who, like, has who? A, like with or without plastic surgery, let's just narrow this down. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm saying without plastic surgery. Like the other night, I was at my friend. Por who's, who's that? Oh, Pauline Porzikova. She's beautiful. Okay, she hasn't done anything, and I was just, well, first of all, she's just stunning. But I was. There's something about when the, all the creases are there that is just so compelling and mesmerizing for me. I feel like I'm getting so much information when I'm talking to them, you know? I don't well, know. okay. So Paulina Porzikova was on America's Next Top Model, okay? 
my daughter goes to this school called the Millbrook School, and she goes, Mommy, I really want to go to this French restaurant. Now, I'm going to bring this back to Polina. Well, we're going to be nice, right? Or is this what? a bad story? What? Is this a bad story about Paulina? No, it's a good story about oh, Paulina. Wow. Okay? So we walk into this restaurant, we sit down, and this girl, and Millbrook's like a very horsey town, okay? This girl, woman walks in, and she has little ponytails. And I'm like, wow, it really pays to be horsey. Like, this is probably a horse farmer, and she's lived her whole life around horses. This is my, like, can't judge a book by its cover, but let's try kind of vibe. And I'm like, was it's she was stunning. And, and they sat down next to it. Us. And then her child, who's a very tall, skinny boy, sits down. And I was like, wow, that girl's so beautiful. Well, she's probably, like, used to be an equestrian jumper, blah, blah, blah. And then Rico Kasich <laughs> comes in. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's Paulina. And she is. And I sat next to her and I looked at her face. This was just two months ago. Oh, funny. And she is beautiful. Yeah. Gorgeous. But she's, like, Czechoslovakian. Those girls are, they're like, they have a DNA jump on us. But I also like, there are some, uh, there are some actresses who have really creased faces, like, like, uh, Angela Houston? like Meg Foster. Have you ever seen? I that is. She's got is ice blue eyes. Uh, who is she? I'll put, I'll throw a picture up for this. I'll How old you. is she? About. Uh, she's like <laughs> our age or older. Older, okay. I think. So and, over. And I'm like, oh my God. Day. What's that? Over 48. Yeah. <laughs> but I just can't stop looking at her. It's so interesting. I love it. Angelica uh -huh. Houston, she has a beautiful face. Angelica Houston? Yeah. She hasn't had any work done, I don't think. Yeah, I guess I'm... There's one picture of her where she's... She's sort of rearing back and her chin uh, and her neck is like even with her chin or I don't this I have photo that that's been sometimes. floating around. I don't I have that problem sometimes. I wish that photo wasn't out there. Well, I mean, I feel like that about ninety percent of the images I've ever taken. Yeah, I mean, I could do it. I don't want to do it. I try not to like <laughs> if I sleep and there's somebody at my house, I'd pull the duvet up for my <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know, it's a cool accessory that I was wearing years ago that, that I think when my <laughs> neck gets really loose, I'll wear more often. But you take a turtleneck sweater and cut the neck off so that you just have a, a crew neck. Mm -hmm. And you just wear it with, like, T-shirts and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's great. It looks Maybe really cool. I mean, I was wearing it years ago. I'm like Preparation H and insulated around the inside and it'll I'm decrease to get, like, It's really a good idea. Like loose, you know? It's fun. Yeah. I think it's fun. You know, like when you lay on your side and your face sort of... <laughs> I've been using funny. this as a measurement. I think the iPhone X is a really good shaver. Like, if you just put it up... Well, you can see what you would look like if you didn't have the excess. Like, oh, I can just do this. I can just, like, do this. But look at this. You can make a phone call. This is called multitasking. While you're on the phone? Yeah. It's like a Korean... It <laughs> it's like a Korean beauty product. You just, Wait. like... Wait, <laughs> I've tried this several times. Well, like, hello? Like this? Hello? But then only one side is... Yeah, but then the other, other side, side is... This is the microphone's right here. This is a PR trick. Like, oh, people wait, think we're just sitting at our like desk. I'm, I'm pushing my skin back. Notice <laughs> I, don't, I don't go down. I just, I just did a spit take. What about the other side of your face? You do the other side after. Look, hello? No, here, I'll wait, call you, you right now. I'm going to call you on the phone. I'm going to call you on the phone right now. You can hear how great it is. Here you go. I'm calling you. Bateman, here's your name. Okay. Hi. Hi, it's Kelly Cajon calling from People's Revolution for Anna Wintour. Wait, but you're just stretching it. Are you trying to hold it back so people can see us smooth on one side? No, I'm just trying to exercise the muscles to pull stimulate them. Oh, won't that just stretch it more? You know, I had a... Okay, I'm going to hang out with the echo. So. Wait, is Anna there? <laughs> I went, I got a massage not too long ago from, you know, it was at a hotel, so it was somebody I didn't know, right? Mm -hmm. And do the whole massage fine, and then she gets to my face, and about halfway through it, I realized she's really stretching my face. And I went, and then it was done, and then I went, oh my God, wait, wait, did you just make this all baggier? 
I don't know. And then I obsessed about that for a while. Cause like, I'm not going to do anything to my face, but I don't, I don't want to like stretch it out like a balloon and, and think it's going to, well, yeah, but what the, f I can't go back in time and like tell that woman to stop stretching my face. Well, I think that this is really, I would not underestimate the power of an iPhone X. <laughs> I, sometimes if I'm in the car, I'm you like, know what I think is really good for the face? What? Is you Don't look say. at a picture of yourself 10 years ago. <laughs> when you know you were probably going, oh, I don't know about this and this and that. Right. right? And you look at it now and you go like, oh my God, what was I even fucking thinking about? Uh, I look fine. So yeah. now do that now because 10 years from now, you'll be looking at pictures of yourself right now going, oh my God, I looked fine. What was I complaining right. about? So that's the present is a gift and that's why they call it a present. Is that, is that the summary of this? I like it. Oh. That's a t-shirt. <laughs> it's probably a t-shirt. Somebody's yeah. on Zazzle right now putting it together. <laughs> um, what else are we talking about? What else is on your mind? Um, I got that Memorial Day. Memorial Day, and I just—I I couldn't write a Memorial Day post. Well, I'll—I'll I'll read you what mine was. Okay. Because this is really how how I feel about it, and 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 I feel like it was received right because I had a lot of like veterans and and families of veterans, you know, saying, "Yeah, I kind of feel the same way," which is, I greatly respect the U.S. military, and I'm I'm very grateful for them but I wish my feelings about the military were not mixed in with my disdain for the way our government uses them for political gains and the way some people fetishize the armed forces. Wow, well, that's very beautiful. So, and you know, I had some people saying, you know, some soldiers saying, yeah, I, I feel the same way. I wish people wouldn't, wouldn't do that, you know, because we're, we're doing what we believe in, but we don't want it to be used for all these other purposes, uh -huh. you know. Well, I don't believe in war, so it's hard. The reason I didn't write a Memorial Day post is I really don't believe in war. I think it's really immature and unnecessary. Yeah. And, and, and the fact that people are volunteering to go into the military, okay, to protect us, there's an agreement. It's like when you go to a hospital, you have to agree that you're sick, yeah. okay? So I don't believe in war, so I don't want there to be war. So the thought of somebody going to fight somebody else with their life, um, I just think is a heavy thing. And I understand yeah. like that that might sound idealistic, but if 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 eighty percent of the people in the world or seventy percent of the people in the world say we, we don't agree with war, then it would end because there would only be thirty percent you yes, know but, but but well what about defense? Because if the thirty percent's like Okay, um, here's another thing. All these guys have laid their... I don't believe in countries. I think it's totally ridiculous that I have an American passport. I'm a citizen of the world. I'm sorry. I think it's ridiculous. A bird doesn't have a fucking passport. A penguin <laughs> doesn't have a passport. Horses pandas don't have... have a pandas, pandas do, though. No, they don't. They have Chinese passports. <laughs> they That's don't. That's what I've heard. Well, then they should they should they should protest. They should have a little panda protest, and it would be great because people would pay more attention to that. Like, how can somebody say I'm American or I'm French or I'm Af what the fuck? We were all born in this world. There's something called migration. I don't I don't want to ask permission. When I went to China, my company is called People's Revolution. I got stuck in fucking immigration so many times in China because they think I'm a communist. Blah blah blah. Oh, and it's no. ridiculous. I, I should have every right. If I want to go to Sierra Leone, I should go to Sierra Leone. I want to go to Malta, Malta. Maldives, Maldives. I shouldn't have to ask permission to go to a fucking country. I have every right to go wherever I want in the world. It's bullshit. This sense of ownership, owning God, owning land, fighting. I'm not down with any of it. Okay? Zero. I'm not into it. It's not my system. Yeah. I feel the thing you said about, you know, oh, we shouldn't have separate countries where it's just I'm a citizen of the world and stuff. I, I feel that way about race. I, I feel that way about race. You know, like when somebody says, you know, oh, when the, the question or the topic comes up about race and what race are you, I always think, because I guess it's stuck in my head from when I was a kid hearing um, we're all the human race. 
So when I hear that, it sounds to me like they're asking, what species are you? And I always think like, why are they asking about race? We're all the same race. And then I remember, oh no, they're talking about color, ethnicity, and- But why do they even have it on the form? It's so stupid. I, it's really I don't know the stupid. answer. I don't know the answer to that exactly. But this 23 I mean, and me, this 23, oh, listen, there's two answers, 23 and me and reincarnation. If you believe in either of those things, that's why when somebody says to me, like, oh, I did this voodoo show, like, are you appropriating black culture? I was like, well, if I was African in another life, technically, no. You don't yeah, know? Yeah, I, I, I have an I have issue with cultural appropriation. I think I've heard some, I think it's, I mean, to me, and this is just my, uh, what makes sense to me, a cultural appropriation, if it has to do with um, blocking one uh, uh, section of our society from having a say publicly about themselves, and yet I'm going to go ahead and have the say for them, which is like blackface, right. okay? We're going to block African Americans from being a part of theater, but we're going to go out there dressed as African Americans, and we're going to characterize who they are and say who they are and behave in the ways that we're saying they behave. That, to me, is completely unfair. Right. Also, what I feel is unfair and is a cultural appropriation is you take something that is of these cultures like, uh, you know, music and, you know, like early blues and all this, and you, have, like, you, know, and you make money yeah. off of it while you're also blocking them from having same access to this sort of uh, the means by which you make money off of it. But all this other stuff when people say like, oh, and it's even gone so far as to like gender appropriation, like, uh, you know, male writers shouldn't be writing female characters. I've even heard that said. And I'm like, that is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Or, oh, you we should shouldn't just be wearing... We shouldn't start in the first seven years back with appropriation. It's too heavy. <laughs> well, save we'll it for another to... one. But okay, so that's a that's a that's a that's a preview of. So everyone, that was Episode just a preview. 10. Episode ten. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. That's just a preview of what's coming in another episode. Justine, Justine, come back. <laughs> 